Lawrence. I'm very excited to be able to show you a comparison between three laptops, the Yoga Pro 7, the newest version, last year's version, the Yoga Slim 7 Pro X, as well as the new Yoga Pro 9i. So we have two AMD versions, both uh, current and last year's generation, as well as the newest Intel version. And we will be comparing it in terms of performance in Cinebench, as well as efficiency. Let's get to it. So the three CPUs we will be comparing is the AMD 6800HS, which is the Ryzen 7 series from last year. 8 cores, 16 threads, 3.2 GHz base frequency and 4.7 GHz boost, built on the TSMC 6 nanometer node. Uh, the newest version, which is the primary computer I'm testing at the moment, is the AMD 7840HS. Uh, still Ryzen 7, 8 cores, 16 threads. Base frequency has gone up quite a bit from 3.2 to 3.8 as well as the boost frequency now hitting 5.1 GHz and it does actually hit this so it's, just, um, it's not just advertisement. And this is built on the TSMC 4 nanometer node so quite a big jump between the 6 and 4 nanometers. Then we have the Intel 13705H and as I said in the beginning this is more or less exactly the same as the Intel 13700H which is a much more common CPU found in laptops. The only differentiating factor is that the 13705H is a custom chip built partly to, to enable the, the RAM to be much closer to the CPU. Here we have 14 cores, 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores for a total of 20 threads. Base frequency as you can see is much lower at 2.4 GHz and boost frequency is up to 5.4 GHz. Fabrication process is Intel 7 which is more or less a renamed 10 nanometer ESF node. The TDP uh, for all of these are 35, 35 and then 45 for the Intel version, but then again TDP uh, values are not that informative, but rather actually using it and testing it at fixed TDP levels uh, does give you a, a much better um, story. Alright, uh, jumping directly into what I think is the most interesting screen um, is the Cinebench R23 multi-core score and performance gain for each watt setting. So what I've done here is I have limited each CPU to be able to draw a maximum of uh, wattage for each test to be able to see how much score do we get at each set power level. So. Um, Looking from last year, the 6800HS compared to, to the 5800U, we see that uh, the gain is very minimal and my recommendation from last year was that don't buy the 68 uh, or 6000 series for, for laptops unless you want the, the APU, the 6800 uh, graphics APU in, in these chips because that was a huge step up as well as a better RAM but not much in terms of efficiency or performance uh, in CPU compute power. But looking at the yellow line here which tells the story for 7840Hs we can see that it's been a, a quite a tremendous uh, leap in terms of CPU performance and it does also excel compared to the Intel version uh, right up until 65 watts where we see the gap closing because Intel again is uh, struggling with efficiency at lower wattages but they, they do perform better if you ramp up the wattage but I mean 65 watts uh, that's pushing it for a laptop uh, of any build size uh, especially the slim versions unless you really like the jet engine sound or really need it for, for work. So just to take this into perspective, starting with the 7840HS and picking the power level 30 watts, we get 12,969 points. Now to match that score with the Intel CPU, we would need 42 watts, which means Intel requires 40% more power to reach the same score. Uh, comparing it to last year's version, this might be a bit unfair, but to be able to match 12,969 points, 
we would need to increase the power from 30 watts with this generation to 65 watts with the 6800 HS. So comparing the 7840 HS against the 6800 HS at each power level, we can see that the gains start small at 15 watts with just a 5% lead. But then as you get up to 25 to 65 watts, we can see that the lead is increased to 20 to 28% for each set power level. So 25% increase over gen over gen. Comparing the 6800 HS against the newest Intel 13700H, we can see that the, the last year's AMD version does hold a lead at lower power settings. So 15, 20, 25 watts, uh, AMD actually overperforms uh, Intel. But at 30 watts, uh, they are evenly matched. And then starting from 35 and above, um, the AMD processor starts to lose in performance compared to the new Intel. But 7840HS uh, does have a remarkable lead at 15 watts of power and uh, maintain that lead all the way up to 65 watts of power. Although at 65 watts, we can see that they are very evenly matched. But again, 30 to 35 watts, uh, they have a lead of around 20 to 25% against Intel. Looking at Cinebench single core score, we can see that the 7840 HS has, uh, has taken a significant lead uh, against last year's version. So we've gone from around 1500 points and a, a sizable loss against Intel from prior generations um, to now making a 18% increase from last year. And they are now uh, more or less exactly evenly matched with Intel in single core score in Cinebench. The, the top single core performance can be reached when the, the CPU power is set to 20 to 21 watts. So increasing it further will he help uh, multi-core score but will not affect single core score. Same with the 13700H, uh, the top single core score is reached at around the same levels but uh, slightly higher. So in the next slide we have the 7840HS multi-core score plotted out in yellow and then I've also added in red the percentage score gain for each 5 watts added to the CPU limit. So we can see that going from 15 watts of power to 20 watts we gain 27% in performance so a huge increase. This increase, uh, increase is uh, smaller and smaller for each 5 watts added and at 35 watts we still get 7% more power going from 30 watts but going from 35 watts to 40 watts just adds another 4% in performance. So just looking at this chart uh, my impression and my conclusion is that 35 watts of power is the sweet spot because we get 85% of the total maximum score that we can get and to be able to, to get the, the last 19% in performance we will need to increase power by 86% going from 35 watts all the way up to 65 watts and just looking from 50 watts of power to 60 watts of power we spend 20% more power to gain 5% higher score so that's a 4 to 1 efficiency ratio which is uh, if you need it, uh, use it, but uh, for many of us, not needed and uh, being able to draw so much less power is, uh, is just great. Stepping away from Cinebench, uh, I've also run PC Mark comparing the 6800HS to, to compare to the 7840HS. Uh, this does not only uh, measure CPU performance, but also the GPU performance. So it's important to note that the newer Yoga Pro 7 does support the RTX 4050, while the Yoga Slim 7 Pro X has the RTX 3050. But in the overall score, we get a 22% increase. Uh, essentials and productivity, which is more CPU based, has a increase of 9 to 12 percent and then content creation which leans more on the GPU has a 50 percent increase. And looking at uh, some st statistics in terms of essentials and productivity we can see that uh, some application starting, open spreadsheet, editing cells and computing data in Excel and saving documents 
we see a uh, increase uh, in uh, speed by 2% up to 37%. So highly depending on what you're doing, but uh, overall a, a great increase in some tasks with the newer CPU and uh, from my own personal impression, I, I do feel it, it, it feels a bit more snappier compared to the 6800HS. But not everything is better against last year's AMD version. I measured power usage and battery drain while showing 720p YouTube content and the 7840HS had an average CPU package power consumption of around 3 watts, whilst the 6800HS only drew 1.7 watts. This is a 76% increase, so <laughs> quite an increase in near idle power usage and when in complete idle uh, the, the difference is even worse. The CPU cores themselves doesn't draw that much more power, but the CPU package as a whole has a considerably higher minimum power usage and I suspect that the integrated graphics are partly to blame and I really hope that we can get a new BIOS release or chipset drivers to alleviate this issue. Uh, the higher power usage also means that the battery life of the new laptop is close to 3.5 hours or 25% worse uh, compared to last year, even though the battery size has increased somewhat. I've gotten some questions in terms of the battery tests and the, the length I've gotten. And just to reiterate here, uh, I'm using the battery saver mode on the, in the Lenovo Vantage settings. I'm using the Windows Power Efficiency mode and I also activate Windows Battery Saver. I have the dedicated GPU disabled in BIOS. I have 50% screen brightness, no speakers, no Bluetooth, no Bluetooth and no keyboard light. Uh, apart from that, these laptops are very similar. So we have the same resolution, same screen size, same RAM speed and almost everything is identical. So I think that this is quite a good comparison uh, as the, the CPU is the main differentiating factor uh, when looking at this. So some final conclusions. Uh, this is a fantastic CPU and the performance increase from last generation and compared to Intel is, is great and it's very fun to see. Uh, the new CPU running at 30 watts of power can now match the 6800HS running at 65 watts of power in terms of Cinebench multi-score. And the Intel 13700H has a quite a disadvantage as it, it requires around 40% more power to, to deliver the same performance that the 7840HS can do at 30 watts. And that lead and the performance increase with AMD holds true all the way up to 65 watts. So above 65 watts, uh, Intel um, is probably still king. But uh, when looking at uh, lighter and slimmer laptops and when uh, opting for lower noise, that means that the, the efficiency in AMD is, is much better. Single core performance has finally gone up with AMD as well, with a 18% increase from last gen, without needing any more power, so that's, that's great. And the single core performance is now matched evenly between AMD and Intel in terms of Cinebench. Now, there are a lot more tests that can be done uh, when measuring CPU uh, performance, gaming uh, specific applications where AMD or Intel might have an advantage. and. If you know that you're using specific applications like Adobe or something like that, um, you will also need to compare this, uh, this performance. But Cinebench is usually a go-to go performance measurement tool, so that's what I'm opting for uh, in this test. From my perspective, the system also feels a bit faster uh, compared to last year. And uh, in terms of noise, noise has been a, an issue with the 7840HS in different models. Uh, I'm very happy to report that the Yoga Pro 7 does not seem to have this issue. Uh, the, the fans stay silent most of the time. They, they can ramp up, but so, so did last year's uh, when, when the power increased. And th there might be some fine tuning from Lenovo to hopefully do in terms of ramping down uh, a bit quicker. Um, 
the downside is that we have worse efficiency at idle or near idle or low utilization tasks and um, that's especially compared to the Ryzen 6000 mobile series. Um, comparing the laptops, uh, we have a 25% lower battery life when watching 720p content and this is likely due to poor optimization in the overall CPU package, for example the integrated graphics and I really hope that this can be fixed with the BIOS or a driver update. So if you're really prioritizing maximum battery life, the 6800HS or the renamed version the 7735HS uh, has better longevity in terms of how long you can operate without uh, needing a power source. But for the overall power efficiency while working with demanding tasks, uh, the 7840HS is now the clear winner. So that's all for me. 7840HS, a fantastic CPU, big performance gains and also big efficiency gains. AMD with the newest generation remains the clear winner in terms of efficiency in laptops. Uh, amazingly so, both compared to last generation but especially uh, against Intel as well unless you're pu pushing above 65 watts with the CPU power package. Um, I am um, going to do further tests and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching and take care.